You cannot abscond. This pesky guardian is blocking your path and you will need to engineer some sort of distraction. And he now brandishes yet another artifact of confection. This man is ruthless. You better brace for impact in the most comedically striking fashion possible. Ugh! The beagle waggis absorbs the brunt of the treat. It looks like Dad will enjoy the prankster's gambit on that exchange, as is usually the case. In retaliation, you take the pie tin and unequip the beagle puss. Everything in your Solidex is pushed back a card. The smoke pellets are ejected from the deck. Yes, this could be just the distraction you were. Oh. Well, nothing happens. What a huge letdown. But when two great forces oppose each other, the victory will go to the one that knows how to yield. Oscar Wilde. Wise words by a man who likely could resist everything but temptation. The cake forces Colonel Sasaka's text out of your Silidex. Sasaka, you beautiful bastard! Now's your chance! Now that Dad is busy placating the smoke detector, you can safely sneak away. You snag your dad's PDA, and maybe later you'll switch the background image to something hilarious as a prank. Besides, it may come in handy later. Your spare capture log card is forced out of the Silidex and consequently integrated with the deck. You now have five cards to work with. Additionally, the red package is addressed to you, so you take it. And upon taking the envelope, you now have the Suburb Beta. You leave the kitchen and capture log the cake on the couch, expelling the pie tin from the bottom card. Furthermore, you merge the two cakes across all five cards. Everything in your Silidex is smushed between the cakes. Why don't you think these things through first? You pause at the junction and head down the hall. You are going to need something to clean up the mess you are about to make by dissecting this cake. To the left is the bathroom, and to the right is your dad's room. It is locked, and you are forbidden from ever entering. He has secrets. You enter the bathroom. You can see the backyard from your window. The jewel in its crown is the swing set, which has provided you with years of joy. There is also a spring-mounted pogo ride, which has been responsible for more than one painful injury, and has provided you with years of lament. On the sink is your dad's razor. On the rack to the side is a fresh towel. You take the razor and use it to perform surgery on the cake. You take the towel and clean off the extracted goods. The items force the manhandled cake into the toilet! And just like that, your Silidex is full again. God, this thing is annoying. After that mess, you choose to return to your bedroom. You're not usually into chick flicks, but Matthew McConaughey's cool charisma could salvage any heap of smouldering wreckage. This is your McConaughey wall, a casual shrine to an amazing actor. The film above that one is a lot better, you think. Can you see her? I want you to picture that little girl. Now imagine she's white. You got us, Matthew. Your smooth talking exposed our latent racism. Damn, you are good. Hi, happy birthday, John. Hello? Hmm. Okay, I will talk to you later. Hey, Gigi's looking for you. Why are you even so popular all of a sudden? Is today some sort of special occasion or something? Did you do something to curry favor with the ladies? Did you break your leg on a puppy or some shit? Dude, what are you doing? I discovered a comet is going to destroy the Earth! It was named after me! Now I'm famous and everyone wants to talk about me a lot! No, stop. Just no. Don't talk about your awful stupid movies or make references to them. Your gross man-bro crush on Matt McConaughey is an unsavory thing to behold. McConaughey? Sounds like a noise a horse would make. I.e. dumb. Equally dumb are all those pictures of that clown you've got hanging up. Those are my dad's. I was talking about Nick Cage. Oh, what? No, man! Cage is sweet! So sweet! <laughs> so lame. You don't even like him ironically or anything. This is, like, for real, isn't it? <laughs> I do things ironically sometimes. What about what I sent you on your birthday? No, those are awesome. What? No, they're stupid, which was a joke. The ironic joke, get it? Wait, you're actually wearing them, aren't you? I'm wearing them ironically. Because they're awesome. The fact that they're ironic makes them awesome. And vice versa. Are you taking notes on how to be cool? Jesus, get a fucking pen. You do realize they touched Stiller's weird... sort of got face at some point. Ew, yeah. Oh well. Uh, anyway, speaking of which... Did you get the mail? Yeah. 
Did there happen to be a package there? Yeah, that's, there's a big red one. You should probably open it. I would, but it's trapped under the Esper beta, so I will probably open it after I install the beta. Oh man, the beta came? Yeah, wanna play it? <laughs> no way. Why not? It sounds so hells of boring, just get TT to play it. She's all about that. Where'd she go? Her internet is blinking in and out, I guess. Probably be back online soon. Oh, and Christ in a sidecar. Are you still using the stack modus? Seriously, dude. You need to bone up on your data structures. That shit is just ridiculous. Okay, I will. You decide to space out in front of the computer for a while before doing anything important. You open the Thypius web browser and direct it to what is indisputably the most amazing website ever created. The new adventure is okay, but you are not sure if you like it as much as the last one. You decide it's time for less meta and more beta. You insert the CD and install the suburb beta. What the fuck is this? You go to your closet where you keep a lot of the clothes and array of handy computer programming guides. Data Structure for Assholes by Buckminster Funny Uncle. Your ignorance just made me throw up a little. Now get a clue, you computer illiterate piece of shit. Free fetch modus in the back. You're not really sure if you really want to dig into this huge tome. It looks really boring and kind of onery. Maybe you'll just check out that free modus instead. You turn to the back of the inside cover where a free fetch modus is included in the plastic sleeve. This one is dictated by the logic of a queue data structure, operating on a first in first out method rather than a first in last out method of stack. Items capture logged in your Silidex are no longer immediately accessible. You can only use the item on the bottom card and must wait for the items on the upper card to be pushed back to it. For instance, the red package is now inaccessible. You can only use the razor at the moment. This modus doesn't strike you as a significant upgrade to your previous one. In fact, it almost seems more inconvenient. You figure you might as well give it a chance though. You try switching back to stack modus, but you suddenly wonder if this is even possible. You don't even remember if you ever had a physical card for the stack modus. You find this all to be a little abstract, and you prefer not to think about it too much. But put it down? You're not quite sure if you understand. You capture log one of the cakes. You finally found a use for all these loitering pastries. Dead weight! After picking up the second cake, it causes your razor to launch out the front of your Silidex. Oh good lord. That beautiful face. You wish the razor would have failed to launch. You decide to get more stuff from your magic chest and open it and capture like one of your favourite books of all time. Wise Guy by Mike Caveney. And there goes the fresh towel. You take the trick handcuffs, expelling the PDA like a bullet. Oh god damn it. You examine the package. It is from one of your internet chums. It's bound in packing tape though, and you'll need something sharp to open it. Ah, of course, the razor. It's all so simple. You wonder why you didn't... You pick up the package again and... Yeah, let's take this from the top. You take three glass shards in quick succession and duck for cover. Your Silidex range devastation on your room from above. And now that your cards are packed with glass, you probably don't want to do that any time again soon. Also, you should probably go and get that stuff before you forget about it. You use the razor to open the package and there is something suspicious inside. Something suspiciously smelly and dirty. It is a stuffed bunny, much like the one held hostage briefly by Malkovich Cyrus the Virus while taunting hard luck protagonist Cameron Poe and strikingly similar to the one scooped up from the soot of a burning Vegas city strip by Cage Poe and offered to his daughter. A gesture symbolic of a tattered exterior surrounding a heart of gold. Poe wasn't much to look at, but he was a good man. But no, it is not merely like that bunny. According to the note of authenticity, it is the very same bunny. This is so awesome. Looking at your computer, it looks like it's trying to get your attention. It looks like you managed to retrieve the beta. Excellent. I'm going to try to connect. Well, okay, but I just got the most awesome present! The rabbit? So sweet! I've heard tales of this wretched creature often. Its Homeric legend is practically ensconced in the fold of my personal mythology by now. 
<laughs> what? Why don't we focus on the matter at hand? Oh, the game! Okay. I don't really know how this works. W what am I even looking at here? You are running the client application. I am running the server, so I am the host user. I have established a connection with you. This is sufficient for us to play the game. Okay, then. Why don't we get started? 